Hi, I'm Lucy Monroe and welcome to my craft of writing workshop. Today we're going to be doing a short video on characterization, writing a three-dimensional character or the characters that will draw your readers into your novel. Let's start by talking a little bit about why it's important to write a fully realized character and not just a placeholder. You've read those books where you have that character who's kind of like they're just maybe a stereotype or just a person who just holds a place. It's like, it's the villain or it's the funny friend or, you know, the, but the character doesn't really ring true to you. It's because that character isn't fully realized. They hold a place in the book. They move the plot forward. They may even play some element of bringing the emotion out in the story, but they're not fully realized. So you don't get to know them as a as a person, which every character should be a person to the reader, should be a real person. So today we're going to talk about the first element of writing a three-dimensional character, and that is what your character looks like, how they dress, how they walk, how they talk. These things matter, and they don't just come out of the ether right? You've got to think about these things. Even if you're a seat of the pants writer, you still have to think about your characters. And as you develop the characterization, you need to take note so that as you go through the book, those characterization elements maintain consistency. So I am a seat of the pants writer. I'll start a book. I may even get the first two or three chapters written before I stop. And I go back and I write down my character's eye color. Um, I write, and I use a descriptive term for it, so I don't just write blue, because for me, I want to know what kind of blue I'm writing about, because there's all kinds of different colors of blue eyes. So I might say crystalline blue eyes, or I might say blue eyes that are, you know, uh, the color of the Aegean, or whatever, you know, just whatever kind of descriptor you want to use for your blue eyes. It could be baby blue eyes, it could be sky blue eyes, it could be pale blue eyes. It could be denim blue eyes, you know, just use something that is a descriptor for that color and take a note of it so that as you're writing your story, that character keeps that color of eyes through the whole book. You want to have hair color, hairstyle. Okay, maybe you have a protagonist who changes his or her hairstyle frequently. That's fine, but just make sure that throughout the book and the different elements, when they have a particular type of hairstyle, it's always that hairstyle. So if she gets her hair cut halfway through the book, or he does, you don't have them still playing with long tresses in, you know, the last chapter. Okay, so that's important. I give ages to my characters. I may never mention the age of my characters in my book, but I know how old they are. So that's an important element. I will put down how old they are because it will impact how they see the world. If you're writing a 30 year old, that is not the same thing as writing a 20 year old. And it doesn't mean that one is any better than the other. It means that they're going to have a different perspective on life. A 20 year old probably hasn't finished university yet. A 30 year old is probably somewhere midway, you know, in their career. They're in and solidly in. and if they're not that as a 30 year old that is characterization in itself because of the explanation of why where are they at in life are they still seeking that which they want to do with their life okay so um we have we've covered we have eye color we have hair color we have skin tone you know what does your character look like is your character mediterranean is your character freckled um does your character uh, burn easily in the sun or does your is your character perhaps of a different any race it doesn't really matter but just make sure you know and that your readers know who and how that character is described something I find a lot easier to make my descriptions with is to have some kind of uh, visual inspiration. So I will make a visual inspiration board or I will do a uh, document. I use publisher, you can use word or whatever. It'll have pictures of my visual inspiration for my main protagonist in my book, along with their visual, the uh, written description of their physicality. So for one of my books, a visual inspiration was The Rock. I mean, you know, Dwayne Johnson, he's great inspiration. It was way easier to write 
uh, descriptive of his that face shape and eye color and certain expressions because I had all these pictures in front of me to then describe. And I got that trick from uh, years ago before I ever published from a friend of mine, um, Jane Porter. I had gone up to visit her when she was still living in Washington and she showed me her visual inspiration board and I took it and I used to do the board like she did and then I realized for me it's easier to have it, you know, an eight and a half by 11 sheet that just goes into the notebook that I keep on every book that I'm writing. So I always have these notes with me and including that. I do a style sheet for my characters. So I know how my characters dress. If and I will look up, you know, trendy styles for certain age groups, for certain personality types. Um, someone who is a very free uh, living person, someone who doesn't have a lot of uptight characteristics may dress quite differently than say a character who's super buttoned up and su super uh, rule following. Um, and so you can give characterization simply by saying how that character dresses the style of hair that they wear, those can be real indicators to what personality type your character has. And we're still in the physical realm. We still haven't gotten to that part of developing the personality. We're talking about what they look like. And it is important to give that. I When I first started writing, I was like, well, I like to picture the characters in my own head of what they look like. I don't want too much physical description. But I found out that I was the minority that most of my readers want as good of a physical description of my character as I give to any setting that I put in the book and it maybe that's a no-brainer for a lot of you but for me it wasn't it was something I really had to stop and think about I had another friend of mine Teresa Scott who suggested she goes you know I make sure that I mention eye color about every 30 pages or so. I mean, you might be every 10 pages. It, it doesn't really matter, but make sure it's not just in the beginning of the book and just at the end of the book that, or even just one time in the book that you mention any of these physical characteristics, because while we don't want to beat our reader over the head with a reiteration over and over again of physical characteristics, readers skim and they may have missed it the first time. They may miss it five out of seven times. So for that reader to get the full realization of the book, you need to take just that little moment to make sure that you insert in and naturally. <laughs> Let's not make some big info dump, right? That's a whole nother aspect of writing we'll talk about later, but when we're doing our characterization and we're describing the physicality of our characters, we are not gonna sit and spend a paragraph or two paragraphs just telling the reader what that character looks like. We're gonna try to make it interesting. We're, we're not going to use the old, oh, and they looked in the mirror and this is what they saw thing. We're going to try to make it interesting and make it part, a very natural part of the story. And an example might be that um, he thinks, oh, you know, because he maybe knows her mother. Oh, you know, she has her mother's blue eyes. Or maybe he's just met her for the first time. He'd never seen someone with such a vibrant, sparkling blue gaze. You know, I'm just saying, make it interesting. Write it in a way that your reader wants to read it. Write it in a way you would want to read it again. If you're skimming that when you go back to reread your manuscript, ask yourself why. I'm not saying take it out because you have to have some physical discriminant, dis <clears throat> excuse me, description in the book, but it should be interesting. Okay. So going further into your physical description of your character, make sure that you have given yourself the opportunity not to have everyone alike. I've written books where everybody had brown hair, everybody had brown eyes, and it was really, really hard to come up with different physical descriptions um, to remember even which character I was writing about. You know, I try now to vary it to make sure that my protagonist one has different color eyes to protagonist two. I try to make sure that the hair color isn't identical either, even if they come from the same culture or background, there are distinguishing factors that you can do. Um, 
I also, if, we, if I introduce secondary characters, which I do a lot in my books, I try to give them a little bit different of a physical description and I always jot it down because you may think you have the best memory in the world and maybe you do, but even if you do, you're going to forget once in a while and you might, I have got through books where I have like had blue eyes here that turned to gray eyes in chapter seven and they were back to blue eyes by chapter 10 and I'm like no that's not okay so like you know I used to go through my books and actually do a search on the word eyes and gaze and just make sure it was real consistent about which character and what colors they had um but I find now that since I keep a written description with me for my books that I it's easier for me to keep track and it's less likely for me to make a mistake Okay, so that covers your physical description of your character and the fact that you need to have fully realized physical descriptions of every character in your book. Even if you don't use those descriptions, you should have a mental idea of how every person looks. So you have some guy delivering at the door, you should know what he looks like because naturally, as you're writing, it may come up that that character has a certain color of eyes. It may come up that that character is a certain build or has a certain way about them. Now, another part of physicality, sorry, I <clears throat> forgot this and I don't want to forget it, is that your character's mannerisms and movements are part of your character's physical description. So if you have a character who has a limp, okay, that's kind of easy, right? You know, um, but what about a character who uh, shrugs a lot? Well, let's not shrug every other paragraph, I mean, or even every page, because that's going to, your reader's going to get real irritated. But you do have some physical characteristics that maybe are going to be unique to certain characters. Like, does she bite her lip when she's nervous? Uh, does he get stiff and formal when he is upset? Or even when he's feeling emotional and doesn't want to show his emotions? Um... There are other physical aspects to your character that you can develop that will help show their personality and help show their growth through your book. But you just have to know that character. You need to be thinking in terms of how do they move? Do they move smoothly through the room? Is he a klutz? Is she a klutz? Um, do they move like a dancer? I like to write characters who are way different than me because I tend to be a klutz. I, that's just kind of my thing. Um, and <laughs> I love to write about people who can move smoothly and who move with dance like grace, you know, um, because for me, writing is not just about entertaining my reader, but it's about entertaining myself. And I write the books that I like to read. So I write about the characters I like to read about. Um, and it is important that we take responsibility for our words. So let's be careful not to use descriptors that are um, considered offensive by some. Hey, I'm not talking about being politically correct. I'm talking about being respectful. So make sure that when you're describing your characters, you're describing in a way that is respectful to whatever culture may be reflected by those characters. Or if not that culture, if somehow there are descriptors that are just not cool at all, let's not use them. Um, and let's make sure that we do use positive terminology. Like if you're talking about a plus size woman, I am one. I have written more than one plus size heroine. Um, let's use descriptors that aren't going to make people feel small when they read it. I just, I know that when I read a book that has fat phobic comments in it or descriptions, you know, there's skinny characters that come off as fat phobic. I will end up putting the book down. I probably will never buy that author again. Not because I'm mad at them, but because I have no desire to feel less about myself by reading fiction. That's just not where I'm at. And most of your readers aren't there either. They don't want to feel bad about themselves because it's something they read in your book. So when you're doing a description, <coughs> excuse me, even a comparison description, be real careful not to use comparisons that could be hurtful or harmful for your reader because you don't know who your reader is. You don't know who's picking that book up. Our words matter. And that's what I'm going to close with today. In characterization and every other aspect of writing, our words matter. 
So you pay attention to the words you put in and so will I.